to my channel. This is the story of Candance Mosler. She was born on February 18, 1920. She was a famous socialite in Houston, Texas at the time. She married the very rich and wealthy businessman Jack Mosler. They had both been married previously. She was born on a farm in Georgia where she was one of 12 siblings. She married early to an engineer. Life acts a housewife was not for her and so she packed up her kids and left to New Orleans. Where she opened up a modeling agency. Soon she made a name for herself and was socializing with the rich and famous. Her charming manners and elegance made her very approachable to others and she had an eye for business. Jack was originally from Romania and immigrated with his family as a young boy. Jacques Mosler was raised by a single mother who made Jacques able enough to stand on his feet and become a millionaire. Jacques Mosler was a man full of empathy and kindness. He always found ways to help the needy and poor children. At 13 he dropped out of school to help his struggling family and started working initially as a paper boy then he became a loan shark. Soon he started his own bank where he gave loan to people in need, with very high interest. He was smart and sharp, he was building his way to success. In 1920 he married his longtime girlfriend but later divorced in 1940. Mosler was a very good man and though he was rich it was very important to him to share and help other through various organizations and charities. Candy was very much aware of his generosity and soft heart. When she married Jack Mosler she became a wealthy woman. They lived in a huge mansion and had many kids. From previous marriages as well as adopted and together. She had many talents and was sitting on the board of Jack's company. She also took care of many charities. Jack was very in love with his charming southern wife. Her sister called her one day and asked if Candy could take her son in as he had problems in getting started with work. His name was Melvin Lane Powers and she was 22 years his senior. Candy welcomed her nephew and helped him to get started with work in Jack's company. She dresses him in designer outfits and became very fond of him. He wasn't bad to look at being 6 foot 3 athletically built with jet black hair. Things between Candy and Jack were smooth till Melvin Powers entered their lives. Melvin Powers 21 years younger than his aunt Candy moved into their Houston mansion to find a suitable job. Jacques helped Melvin to get work and offered to him to live in their 28 bedroom mansion. Suddenly, something started going on between Melvin and his aunt. It was a sexual relationship. Jacques got to know about this affair through a co-worker which left Jacques shocked. Jacques searched for his wife's diary which provided proof of her relationship with her nephew. Upon finding out, Jacques kicked Melvin out of the house, to which Melvin responded angrily saying, One day I will return as the owner of Jacques' mansion. This statement scared Jacques and it was found in one of his journals that if he doesn't kill Melvin and Candace, they both would kill him. Candace and Jacques separated their ways but neither filed for the divorce this was because Candace didn't want the public to know about her having an affair with her nephew and Jacques didn't want to divide his property with her. However, Jacques provided Candace with enough money, every month. The only way Candace could get all of Jacques' money was if he was found dead. June 30, 1964, Candace entered her husband's Florida apartment to meet their four kids. During that time, she claimed to have had a migraine attack because all her life she had many of them. She took those four kids with her and went to the emergency room to see a doctor. Meanwhile, a man broke into Jacques' apartment and stabbed him. After stabbing continuously, the man hit Jacques' head with a heavy object which caused his death immediately. Soon after the murder took place, Candy entered the apartment and found her husband's body fully covered in blood. She called the police and informed her of the entire incident. The police started their investigation and found fingerprints of the murderer. After running them through a system, the police found that the fingerprints of the murderer matched Melvin's. 
Melvin was living in Miami at that time but it was reported that he was seen near Jacques Florida's apartment. The police arrested Melvin and Candace due to such suspicions. But they got away with this murder by hiring a team of lawyers and Candace's initial remarks was that why would she kill her husband? The trial was a big show and people flocked to watch it. Both Candy and Melvin was found not guilty. Exactly one year after winning the case, Candace and Melvin parted their ways but she inherited the millions of her deceased husband. In 1971, Candace even remarried a new man, Barnett, who went into a coma due to brain damage, one year after their marriage. In 1976, Candace was found dead in a hotel room in Miami. Her cause of death was reported as a drug overdose of migraine medication.